wonderful welcome. First, I'd like to send my greetings to all the people of Nigeria. I've been treated with uh, unexcelled hospitality and generosity. So I want to express those sentiments uh, to feel welcomed uh, from the United States. Before I arrived in Abuja, I spent some time in Geneva, where there's a working group on arbitrary detention. It's a five-member group that's a unit of the United Nations Human Rights Council. And it entertains applications on behalf of persons who have been arbitrarily detained under international law. Uh, I submitted an urgent action application on behalf of Namdi Kanu, identifying all of the elements of arbitrariness in his current detention, including, for example, his denial of access to counsel, which is triggered the moment he is detained. And so you've all heard from Ijafor that he was denied counsel even when he was first brought into court. Uh, but that's not the only denial of uh, detention rights. Um, it seems quite clear uh, based upon the history of his detention and the struggle for Biafran's through peaceful means to secure a separate sovereignty, that he was singled out because of his ethnicity, his membership in the Biafran community, which is a discrimination prohibited specifically under international law and indeed also under the Nigerian constitution. If you read the counts in the complaint, now seven, they come at the 11th hour, uh, which is quite irregular. Ordinarily, you accuse someone before a few days before a trial. Um, they consist of activities that are commonplace for all sorts of Nigerians. And why is Namdi Khan the only one charged with such extravagant crimes as treason, levying war against Nigeria? Uh, but in addition to those violations of international law, uh, the fact that he was kidnapped he was tortured, he was extraordinarily renditioned to Nigeria without any due process of law is also illustrative of the arbitrariness of his detention. And you can think of the irregularity by contemplating the following. At the time that he was delivered from Kenya to Nigeria, he had not even been charged with four of the seven counts that are now laid against him that were not advanced and articulated until last week. He couldn't possibly have been extradited even for legal means. Under the urgent action process in the working group, the Nigerian foreign minister was immediately notified of the allegations in our complaint. Uh, in an ordinary case, there's 60-day response time. But because there's a jeopardy to Namdi Kanu's health, including the lack of access to professional medical care. It's on a fast track. Uh, if the foreign minister responds, and at present he is not, uh, then I will be permitted an opportunity to answer. But the working group is endowed with authority to make final definitive pronouncements on international law. And the Nigerian government is a signatory to the critical documents, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Inter Universal Declaration of of human rights, which bind the government of Nigeria to adherence, uh, and a pronouncement by the working group of arbitrary detention uh, would be a critical weakness in the, in the movement for even a trial for someone who has been illegally captured and delivered. It is a fundamental principle, a universal principle of law, domestic and international, that the government should not be able to profit from its own wrongdoing or criminality. And if you permit governments to kidnap and torture and then try persons illegally, you're then emboldening governments uh, to serve as kind of vigilante justice running around all the world, capturing any of their dissidents with no due process and bringing them back to trial. After I completed my work in Geneva, then I traveled to Athens. Uh, I am working with the foreign ministries of Greece and Israel. I didn't get to Israel because of some glitch in COVID-19, 
but I hope to travel there after this Abuja visit terminates, uh, to sue the government of Nigeria in the International Court of Justice that sits in The Hague. The International Court of Justice is not like the International Criminal Court. The International Court of Justice only entertains suits between nations. Uh, most recently, in a case very similar to the one concerning Nigeria, uh, the Gambia sued Myanmar in the International Court of Justice for genocide against the Rohingya, and they won early court battles. Uh, so the nations bringing suit don't necessarily have to be the ones suffering from the wrongdoing. Uh, and the International Court of Justice has a history of trying genocide cases, uh, stemming its back to the wars that erupted after Yugoslavia disintegrated, uh, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Uh, there are nine-year terms for 15 members of the High Court uh, that sits in the International Court of Justice, but we think this is important to have a platform that exposes the daily horrors and atrocities that are inflicted on peaceful civilians uh, in the Southeast. Uh, I want to underscore that this issue of the upheavals and strife in Nigeria are not intended to um, point one group against another. The idea is to make everybody better off. There's not enmity, there shouldn't be enmity between the Fulani, the Biafrans, the Aruba. We can work towards a process where everybody in the long run benefits. And I think one of the models that can be utilized uh, in terms of peaceful way in which to reorganize <coughs> the Nigerian dispensation that benefits all is Czechoslovakia. After the Cold War ended, they had the Czechs and Slovaks were all under one umbrella, Czechoslovakia. But they decided they simply had different histories, different ethoses, and they needed to separate peacefully, which they did. Separated the assets and the liabilities and whatever. So there's no reason why there has to be violence, even if there has a change in the structure of Nigeria. And I want to conclude by welcoming everyone who's in attendance here, and this the wonderful legal team that Namdi Khan has put together, I'm proud to be a part of.